It is 6.30 in the morning and ta-da! I've experimented with the evening sessions, the late night practice sessions in here. I haven't done too much with the morning yet, but I'm gonna give that a go. I'm not a morning person, definitely not, but with a couple of kids and by the time you get them to bed and whatnot, I'm just exhausted at night now. So if it's not, if I'm not traveling or if it's not a night where I'm playing, you know, out in town, have a gig or something, it's hard at night. <laughs> to, to muster the energy. I have made a little progress on the room, by the way. If you can see this behind me, it's just a whiteboard with a list of chores I have to do, but I've found that that angle and that size is a pretty good reflector. So if I kind of stand, I sort of stand right here and play into it, the sound I get back is pretty decent. And then the room provides a little, a nice ambience, ambiance. Um, there's a bit of a, it's, I wouldn't call it an echo, but I don't know, some reverberation in the room, but at least I'm getting my main sound coming back to me, some of that air, some of that readiness. I'm still enjoying the number four Ricos, which is sort of blowing my mind. One of the things that I do, I'll tell you what I'm doing right now at 6.30 in the morning. I have a timer set for 25 minutes, so I just so I don't have to think about time and how long I'm doing something, and I'm just playing the note G, just a, a low G on the, on the tenor for 20 minutes or so, that's it. That's all I'm gonna do, is just try to get that one note sounding right. <laughs> Man, it is really weird light outside right now. We had this fire last night. What did you say, Nora? Might as well stay inside then. That's what we're doing. Oh my God, that doesn't... I went into the kitchen to do the dishes and I was about to call my wife and I was like, hey, come look at this sunset. Wait, that's not a sunset. You know how just the other day I was saying, like when I was on that hike, how it looked like a tinderbox up there? This is so sad. Back in February, we got a little bit of rain in Los Angeles and this whole area was so green and now it's all back to being like tinderbox. Bone dry and brown. I mean, ugh, this sucks, but we need water. We need rain so desperately. A uh, couple things. The t-shirt I was wearing in yesterday's vlog, somebody asked about it, it's this. I forget where I got it, it's pretty awesome. I like the part at the bottom that says warning for adult language, <laughs> requires coffee, multitasking. So there's one more question that I addressed yesterday that it just was, I felt like it was too, I didn't want to include it in yesterday's vlog because I feel like it needs its own space. All right, this last question is kind of deep, but I think it's really important and it kind of got me upset, not by the person who asked me the question, but just empathizing with the situation. Uh, it's about, for lack of a better term, I would call it jazz bullying. Bear with me, it's a long question, but I think it's worthwhile. Hello, Bob. I go to a high school where our musical director does not do festivals or anything competitive. He doesn't believe festivals are a good idea because or she believes that competing creates unnecessary school rivalries and practicing to compete or audition for Essentially Ellington is effective in the short term, but it doesn't help students achieve a fulfilling lifetime of making music. I'm a high school staff member at a music camp that my district offers to younger students. Some of the other staff are from other high schools in the district that are recognized nationally and win festivals. To them, my school is seen as a joke because we never compete like they do. One thing I noticed about the other students is how competitive they are at everything. Every jam session they invite me to, they turn it into a quote unquote battle where they compete to outperform each other and throw out their most impressive licks. A tenor player there told me that, quote, he can't wait to destroy me in a song. Maybe I'm seeing things in a negative way and need to change my opinion, but soloing for the purpose to outperform others isn't something that's fun for me. When I get put in those situations, all the passion I have towards playing gets destroyed. I don't think I'm a bad musician. I've made much progress. Uh, skip, okay. The other day I had a gig with the combo I'm in. The students found out and wanted to join the gig. Other people in the group felt it was unnecessary to have them join us, so I told them no. They got offended and then they said to each other, quote, let's show up and destroy everyone else tonight. I've seen all your Bob Reynolds guitar band videos that you've posted and everyone there looks like they're enjoying themselves and creating music. I love your album Deja Vu because as you described it, the album was two friends having a conversation. I feel like a lot of students my age are amazing musicians but are obsessed with battling each other to prove who is the best and just bragging about knowing fragments of giant steps and the internal triangle. Maybe I'm only seeing the negative aspects. Okay, you get the gist of it. That's, that's a long one. Uh, wow, 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 where to start? 
here's my thoughts about competition in music, especially at the high school level. I think a little bit of it is good, a healthy amount. So that same guy, he was referencing the, the saxophonist Juan Roland that I made my album Deja Vu with. We were competitive with one another in high school as and with a couple other guys, but it, it was a healthy competition. We were friends. It was never like, I'm gonna destroy you or anything like that. Also, what kind of moron do you have to be to be in high school and thinking you're gonna destroy anybody? I'm sorry, man, but that's just stupid. Like, who, you know, what if Chris Potter walked into the same room with them? Are they still gonna be saying that? It's just ridiculous. Now, I'm gonna flip flop a little bit here. There is a long history of sort of, especially like tenor battles, right? You know, it's classic, like Johnny Griffin and um, Eddie Lockjaw Davis and Gene Amons and Sonny Stitt and, I mean, Sonny Stitt was just about anybody. As a general rule, I think it's gotta be like friendly competition or it doesn't really yield a great result. I think there's definitely something to be said for, you know, you step into to a situation and there's a bunch of other saxophone players or other horn players or whatever, hopefully anybody better than you, it should raise your game. It should give you that kind of nervous, anxious feeling where you just, you wanna put forth your best, you know, maybe reach for something that you previously haven't reached for. That's like an exciting form of competition, but but the kind that this guy's describing in the letter is sounds to me like sad, unfortunate circumstances. And all I can really say is, you know, screw those guys and just keep doing what you're doing. It, all that matters is if you're doing what you're doing well and pursuing your goals. Yeah, destroying anybody on a song is, is just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And yes, the videos that he's talking about, the guitar band thing, we are enjoying making music with one another. <laughs> challenging one another but in a in a in a supportive way I guess in the best of all ways you know challenging like hey man you know let's let's do this thing really well but not never in a negative way that's that's just I don't know that's ridiculous totally ridiculous so feel free to send this video to these people look here's the thing time will cure all of this because Anybody who's acting that way is going to get their ass handed to them. It's inevitable. And that's not the kind of thing, that kind of ego. It's good to have ego. You need, you need a healthy ego, especially to do this, to play well. True. But that kind of nonsense is not going to last long. So, you know, just uh, do your thing and let time take care of the rest.